Hello, my name is Brett Martin. Uh, I'm a systems engineer with Cisco in the UK. Today we're going to be looking at how we can reduce the amount of time it takes to roll out wireless to a branch environment by using the APIC EM plug and play app. This completely cuts out the process of pre-provisioning or pre-staging access points uh, off-site before they're shipped to the branch. So the first thing that we need to do is configure our wireless LAN controller. We're going to create an AP group for our branch access points, which allows us to push out a common set of SSIDs and RF profiles to those access points. So the next thing to do is to create a FlexConnect group per branch. Uh, this is best practice as it gives you a great deal of flexibility in some of those site-specific configurations that you might want to apply. So next you need to create a config file per branch. Uh, you'll save this in uh, .json format uh, and I'm using Adobe Brackets here to do that. Now, Obviously in this example we're creating that file manually but we're going to look in a, a future video at how we can automate that process. The next task is to upload that .json file uh, through the configuration tab of the plug and play app. Next up we go to the bulk import tab where we'll create a project for all the APs that we're going to install in branch 1. First of all you need to download the sample CSV file and then you need to populate that with the details of all the APs that are going to be installed in branch 1. So you can get those serial numbers from CCW, the ordering tool, and the really nice thing is that they're available in that tool before the APs are even delivered. If you don't have access to the ordering tool and you have the APs in front of you, you might find it useful to use a USB barcode scanner to capture these details from the box. Next we'll give our APs logical names. We add the full product ID. And then we tell APIC which config file we want to apply to this particular project. We use the same CSV file for provisioning routers and switches. Uh, we don't need these fields for, uh, for a wireless access point, so you can just put false uh, in these fields here. So now we're done, and we can save that file uh, in CSV format. Next we go back to the bulk import tab of APIC-EM and import that CSV file that we just created. And the last thing to do is flick onto the Projects tab and choose the Branch 1 project from the drop-down list and verify that your access points have been imported correctly. So the next thing that we need to do is to tell the AP where the PMP server is. Uh, we're doing that here via DHCP option 43. Uh, you can also do that via DNS. In the future you'll be able to do that via a, a cloud redirect service on cisco.com. So it's worthwhile looking at the config guide for this part. As you can see, there's a few extra characters that you need in addition to the APIC IP address. So now that we've done all the prep work, I'm at the branch and I'm ready to unbox and plug in my access point. This particular model is a 1700, but it's also supported on the previous generation 16, 26 and 3600, as well as the newer 18, 28 and 3800 series. So I've put a console cable on the AP just to show you what's going on. And you can see here that because there's no config uh, on the AP, the plug and play process has begun. So we've got the details of the PMP server in that DHCP response that we configured earlier on. And as you can see, it's pulled down the appropriate config and then we'll go ahead and reboot. You don't have to have a console cable on the access point to see what's going on. You'll probably get all the detail that you need from the APIC interface. So let's take a look at the end result. The access point has joined the correct controller. Uh, it's already got the right name. It's already in Flex Connect mode and it already has the right uh, primary and secondary controller names and IP addresses. We can see it's already in the right Flex Connect group and we can also see that it's in the correct AP group. So there we have it. If you've got a large distributed Cisco wireless network that you need to get up and running super quick, this is the way to do it.